بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد Continuing with these brief readings from Imam al-Bukhari's Al-Adab al-Mufrid Imam al-Bukhari he said Bab al-Khuruj إلى الضيعة Chapter Going out to the ضيعة Going out to the ضيعة The ضيعة That is From where a person Literally means the place of harvest But in this context The thing from which a person Gets his income Gets his harvest, gets his income Earns his living Babun al khuruju ila bay'ah Chapter Going to the day'ah Then Imam al-Bukhari he quotes the hadith A short hadith Of Abi Salama radiallahu ta'ala anhu Qala ataytu Aba Sa'idin al-Khudri Wakana li sadiqa Abu Salama he says That I came to Abu Sa'id al-Khudri Radiallahu ta'ala anhu Another companion وَكَانَ لِي صَدِيقًا And he was a صديق of mine. Abu Salama is saying, I went to Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, and Abu Sa'id al-Khudri was a صديق of mine, was a friend of mine. فَقُلْتُ أَلَا تَخْرُجْ بِنَا إِلَى النَّخَلِ So I said to him, Will you not come with us to the Nakhal, to the date palm trees, يعني to the garden, of the date palm trees. فَخَرَجَ وَعَلَيْهِ خَمِيسَةٌ لَهُ So then Abu Sa'id, he came out and he was wearing a khamisa. He was wearing a garment made of, of wool. So concerning this hadith, it's a brief hadith. We will mention and speak about three points related to it. The benefits are many, no doubt. But we'll mention three to be brief. The first is concerning the chapter title. Going out to the place where a person gets his income from. Going to the place that is the source of income for a person. Whether that place is a place of agriculture, whether it's a place of farming, whether it's a factory whether it's an office, regardless. This shows to us, as Shaykh Abdul Razak al-Badr, Allah Ta'ala mentions, the inayah, the importance that the companions had and gave to earning a living, earning an income, putting food on the table, not being reliant upon others. This here indicates to us that the companions were working men, men who earned a living. Men who earned a living, earned an income, and weren't reliant upon others. Likewise, Sheikh Abdul Razak, he said concerning this, and this indicates to us that the Muslim, he is somebody, the male Muslim is somebody who takes responsibility of earning a living, earning an income. And as a result of that, he benefits from it, and likewise, his family, they benefit from it. And if it is the case that the Muslim, he goes to his workplace, he earns this living, while he is bearing in mind, while he is conscious of the fact, while he is that he is wanting to have ihsan upon himself, and ihsan upon others, goodness upon himself by earning a halal income, and goodness upon those whom he is in charge of, his wife, his children, his dependents, having ihsan upon them, by spending upon them, by earning this halal income, then as a result of that intention, the person will be rewarded. If it's the case that you go to your workplace with the intention, a genuine intention, that I'm going to go there in order for me to earn a halal sustenance that I can sustain myself with and that I can sustain my family with, that type of person, he will earn reward just by that intention of his. The intention of going to work and earning an income from his workplace. Sheikh Abdul Razak also mentioned 
that for the one, for example, who has a farmland, like in this hadith, he has a farm of date palm trees, for example, as has been mentioned in this hadith. If the person has the intention that the animals, he wants the insects, for example, the insects to come and benefit from the dates, from the things that are available for them to feed off on. In my farm, just by that intention, that I have a farm, for example, and there are things there, there's water there, there's some dates that have, might, might have fallen on the ground, bits and bobs that the, that the animals might benefit from, that the birds might benefit from, that the insects might benefit from. Just by you having this intention in mind, you're going to earn an ajar by way of that. If an insect comes and he eats from some of the food that is in your farm, as a result of the intention that you had, you get rewarded just by the insect eating from, from the food that you, or from the things that you have in your farm. Likewise, Shaykh Abdul Razak, he said, concerning the part when Abu Sa'id, he said, or rather when Abi Salamai, he said, أَتَيْتُ Abu Sa'id al-Khudri وَكَانَ لِي صَدِيقًا I came to Abu Sa'id al-Khudri and he was a sadiq of mine. He was a friend of mine. This Sheikh Zaid uh, al-Madkhali, Sheikh Abdul Razak, they mentioned, this shows the importance of having a khalil for yourself, of having a close friend or close friends for yourself. Yes, the Muslims are, no doubt, brothers and sisters. But within that ummah, within that uh, uh, body of Muslims, there are tabaqat, there are levels. You have Muslims that are righteous, the iman it is, manifest upon their tongue and their limbs, you can see, judging by what is apparent, that he is a good person, a righteous person. And then you have those that, whose iman is weak, those who outwardly display the weakness in iman. So yes, the Muslims, they are brothers and sisters, but they are of different levels. There are those who are firm upon practicing the deen. There are those that are weaker. So with that being the case, a person, yes, we are all one Muslim body, but he, amongst those Muslims, he chooses select people from Ahlul Ilm, Ahlul Fadl, Ahlul Wafa, Ahlul Sidq, from the people of those that have knowledge that they can benefit from, from the people of truthfulness, people that are trustworthy and truthful, people that are loyal. A person chooses amongst the Muslims those people that are going to benefit him by being in his company. We did use this from this hadith. Abu Sa'id, or rather Abu Salama, he says, I came to Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, wa kana sadiqan li. He was a friend of mine. No doubt all of the companions, they were brothers one to another. But he means here that he was a specific friend of mine, a specific companion of mine. A person, he should be wise about whom he sits with, who he has company with. As the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, he said in the hadith recorded by Imam Abu Dawood, declared Sahih by Imam, Al-Albani, Al-Mar'u ala dini khalilihi. A person is upon the deen of his khalil. He's upon the religion of his friend. فَلْيَنْظُرْ أَحَدُكُمْ مَنْ يُخَالِلْ Therefore look, each one of you should look as to whom he yukhalil, whom he takes as an intimate friend. Your company, your environment, it's going to have an effect upon you. Your soul, it is like a thief. It snatches away from the surroundings that the soul is in. It snatches and it steals away from the environment that it's in. As they say, a sahib sahib. A sahib sahib. The sahib is a sahib. The companion, the sahib, is a sahib. He drags you. He pulls you. The one that you're around is a sahib to you. He drags you. He pulls you. So if it is the case that you have chosen good people as your company, righteous people as your company, virtuous people as your company, then they're going to end up pulling you. Yes, habunak. They'll end up pulling you towards the righteousness that they're upon. If you choose a friend of sunnah, he follows the sunnah. What he believes is in conformity with the sunnah. 
what he says, it is in, it coincides with the sunnah. Slowly but surely, even though you might be weak in that regard, but because you're keeping company with him, slowly but surely, you're going to end up manifesting that very same sunnah that you find your friend manifesting. But then the same goes for the one who takes unrighteous people as a company for him. You take unrighteous people, you might be a righteous, good, upright Muslim, observant of the deen. But how many a times that type of person who was righteous, good, observant of his deen, starts to hang about with the riffraff, starts to hang about with those people that waste away their time in this life, starts to hang about with the people that manifest evil. When he speaks, he can't help but say a single sentence with a curse inside it, with a swear word inside it. This type of person, you see a righteous person, hangs about with his bad company, slowly but surely, the righteous person becomes a thing of the past. Do you remember so-and-so? He used to be good. We used to see him at the masjid. We used to see him at the lessons. Now... His hal, subhanallah, taghayyara. His hal has changed. Why? How? Because of the bad company that he slowly but surely fell into. So this part of the hadith here indicates to us the importance of having good companionship. Take good companionship. Have friends of yours, brothers of yours that you are in company with and be, be and bearing in mind and being sure to keep away from the company I will harm you. Then the Abu Sa'id, then Abu Salama, he says, and this is the shahid, this is the part of the hadith that is related to the chapter. فَقُلْتُ أَلَا تَخْرُجْ بِنَا إِلَى nakhal. So then he said to Abu Sa'id, will you not come to us, to the nakhal? Will you not join me in my uh, departure to the nakhal, to the date prom? And then Abu Sa'id, he came out with a khamisah on, with a garment of wool. So concerning this, concerning the fact that they went to the Nakhl, to the garden where the date palm trees are, a person, Sheikh Abdul Razak, he mentioned, goes to a garden, goes to the countryside, goes to a farm, either because that is his place of work, of sustenance, like in this hadith, so he goes there in order to clean up his farm. He goes there in order to water the trees, the plants, and so on and so forth. He goes there in order to, out of concern for his amal, out of concern for his work, out of concern for his sustenance. And if he goes there with this in mind, that I'm going to go there, taking care of my farm, because it's my sustenance, and via that sustenance, I'm going to feed myself, feed my family, then he's rewarded. But likewise, a person goes, to the farm, to the countryside, to these gardens, which is the case with us, most of us. I don't think many of us here have a farm, if anyone. Most of us, we go to a farm, we go to a garden, we go to a park. For why? Why do we go there? Nuzha. We go there what? For a bit of relaxation. For a bit of a relaxation, an outing, uh, to clear your mind, perhaps. Uh, a bit of a relaxation, yani. So Sheikh Abdul Razak, he says concerning this, if it is the case that a person goes to these gardens, the countryside and what have you, he goes there with the intention, look how important the intention is, and look at the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look at the generosity of Allah. A person goes to these, for example, this farm of date palm trees, huh? he goes to the countryside, he goes to, I don't know, for example, Lister Park, it's the only thing I can think of. Or if you're from Nelson, he goes to uh, Bendel Hill. Uh, you go to these places, these countrysides and what have you, with the intention that I am going to rejuvenate my soul, revive my soul, strengthen my soul so that I can be re-energized. And thus, after that re-energization, I can become even more focused on my ibadah. My mind becomes cleared up as a result of going out into the countryside going out onto the farm and so on and so forth, going to the park and so on and so forth. As a result of that, I'm going to go there so that I can be re-energized and thus focus more so 
on my ibadah. Focus more so on my ilm. Focus more so on those fadail, on those righteous actions and righteous endeavors. Then in that situation as well, a person is rewarded just for going into that garden, just for going into that countryside, just for going into that, into that farmland. So on that note, inshallah ta'ala, we shall conclude with those uh, yani benefits. And uh, inshallah ta'ala, we shall continue with reading from Imam al-Bukhali al-Adab al-Mufrad in the days to come. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Walhamdulillahi rabbil